As we know, the Cheviac isn't running as good as it used to run or as good as it can run. So I'm going to test it all out and see what's wrong with it. Bought a couple treats for it. One, I've already installed eight brand new AC spark plugs. And the next problem is the gas tank is full of rust inside so it keeps clogging up the fuel filter that's built into the front of the carburetor. So unfortunately I had to keep it running so I ripped a little tear into the old fuel filter after knocking out all the crud. And now I'm going to have to take that old Rochester four barrel apart and get some dirt out of it. Another reason why General Motors cars sort of die out when you step on them is the rotor can be going bad because they burn microscopic pinholes through them and arc out to the counterweights which advance it. And another reason can be bad ignition wires, so I'll get my meter and test the resistance on each one. And then we'll see how good this thing can run. It does have good compression on all the cylinders. Recently I've also replaced the clutch fan with a flex blade fan because the clutch fan blew up. And I put the radiator in from the Molesville that I scrapped last year because this one doesn't leak and the other one had hit the fan and chewed itself all up. So, that's where the fuel filter is. Of course, rotor's under there. Spark plugs are already done. So, next step isn't that difficult until I get into that bitch. Okay, distributor cap is upside down now. And I've got the old rotor off. Looks really old. You can see all those patterns forming in there. That's corona patterns from high voltage, so it's forming hot spots. It could be arcing. Of course, that's what it's supposed to look like. Well, when you get this off, that's where the rotor sat. Just check your springs for your advance weights. Make sure everything returns. Sometimes these little pins that these pivot on seize up. Sometimes springs are broke. It advances too quick. And then every time you accelerate, your engine has a heavy pinging sound. You have your little green and yellow wire there. They go to your ECM. Uh, they go to the reluctor coil. And when this thing moves for advance, it sometimes breaks those wires off. And that's why one day you're driving your GM car, then all of a sudden, boop, it shuts off. And you can't get it restarted, and there's no spark. It's not that hard to fix. Also, check in there. That one looked really good. I just took a paper towel and took off the carbon dust. It's also a good idea to make your cars run better is to clean the outside of the distributor cap. If they collect dirt and oil, then dirt conducts electricity, and then sometimes they can arc between posts or down the side. Well, that's back on. If you want to test if your vacuum advance is working, well, that diaphragm, you just unplug the vacuum hose going to it, plug any kind of vacuum hose on it you want, stick it in your mouth and suck when the cap is off, and you can see the rotor move a few degrees. And then you leave suction on the tube with your tongue and hold it and see if it holds suction. It should hold suction indefinitely. If the suction just bleeds away quickly, well, then the diaphragm has a tiny leak. Uh, you won't notice much problem driving your car, except you won't have as much performance. It'll have a slower idle and worse fuel economy. Well, now I got the wires off the cap, but they're still attached to that plastic thing so I don't lose their firing order, even though the firing order for small block Chevys is 18436572. And I've got my ohmmeter out there to measure resistance. So I've got number one unplugged. Probe in there, probe in the other end, and we're getting a reading of 10.47K. 10,470 ohms. That's not great. I consider a wire good if it's under 12K, but that's not great. New wires have a reading anywhere from, for example, 3,000 ohms to say 6,000 ohms. Good thing I've got some spare old wires hanging around in case I've had any worse than that, so now I've got seven more to check. Of course, your wires can still be bad because the insulation is bad. You can't measure that with a meter. But you not know that's bad because if a little bit of wetness, fog, or dampness gets on them and your car misfires, well then your wires are bad even if the reading's perfect. Longer wires always read higher than shorter wires. That's just because they're resistor core. So this is a shorter one, so it's reading 7.17, so I'll consider that one quite good. Well, now for the fuel filter, which is right there. 
and you should be using a line wrench. You hold this big one still and then you crack this one loose with a line wrench that grips it better. But I didn't happen to have one at the farm so I used a vice grip and it worked fine. If you don't use that you can twist the hose off because everything will turn together especially if you try to move that one first. Well she's out and that filter looks horrible and you can see at least one of those little holes I tore in it. Now there is a right and a wrong way to go in. The hole goes towards the opening there and of course that goes in that way. You put them in the opposite way and the thing just doesn't run. No fuel flow. Next step now that the fuel filter is out and I know I have a rusty tank inside is sometimes with these old mechanical fuel pumps you can't take them apart and clean them. They have of course two rubber valves on springs and that's how they work and then a big diaphragm. Well little flakes of rust get caught uh, in between where the rubber seats and you don't get full suction or full compression of pushing the fuel out. And so I'll have this guy he needs a job. Uh, help, give him a job, turn in the key for me and see if it squirts fuel at a good amount and that's telling me that at least I know if I reassemble everything it has more problems it'll be inside the carburetor. Okay you don't have to touch the gas pedal it won't start because I've got the big red wire and distributor unhooked so there's no spark for safety reasons so I'm out of the way I'm clear crankage uh -oh. again oh that's good okay yeah she's flowing really good fuel's not as orange as I thought considering the rust but that's probably just from sitting and settling down okay good. back to boiling water <laughs> with his my rocket stove I his new thought. homemade stove <laughs> he steps it for a coffee or I mean to wash the dishes this time not coffee right uh, I'm just trying it out oh okay when you have your fuel filter holder out, always make sure before you put it back in that that little plastic nylon gasket's still on it. They fall off and you don't even know. You could, they could be on the ground. And you wonder why no matter how tight you make this thing, it still leaks. And of course, there's the crossover pipe that warms your carburetor up. The exhaust passes through on these manifolds and that gets pretty hot. And there's a possibility your engine could light on fire if it's slowly seeping fuel and you're driving and you don't know it. Now that I got the top off this quadra junk, of course it's full of crud. You can see it all down there in the bowl. And one more problem was this little power valve thing here. It's got a little like a little brass piston was seized up in that little hole, so I had to work that out. Now I gotta blow it all out. That's the thing I'm talking about. I'll have to steel wool it down and make it work nice and freely. So it's all back together now. It's too tedious to try to film putting one of these things back together. Plus unfortunately the main top gasket is broken in three pieces. So I hope that doesn't make it run worse. It was already kind of broken and now it's more broken. But so we don't have too much crankage and pumpage to start this up. Almost every carburetor has some sort of vent thing on it. And you can just fill them up and that pre-fills the bowl so that it's, the carb is full like it was just running. A little fire up. Perfect. Yeah, see it's full. It's coming out the overflow. It used to go to the charcoal vent canister thing. I didn't change any spark plug wires. They all tested out under 11,000 ohms. I didn't change anything else except for the fuel filter and the rotor and the spark plugs a month ago. So let's see if she runs any different. Of course this thing's always been a bit cold-blooded having no back pressure and a dirty carb. Ah, uh, why not some pumpage for the hell of it. Little choke. choke
less than one minute later. It's running perfect. The motor is still cold. Let's just hope I can punch it and jam it and slam it. And I got that roof a bit pushed up, so I hope I don't get wet pants this time. And I got my new windshield to stop the mud, the blood, the sweat, and the beer from getting in here. Very responsive. <laughs> never stalls. Like it's never been before like that. Maybe even Rick will be able to start it and drive it now without it stalling.